So now that I've shot about 150-ish weddings with Sony, after switching over from Nikon full frame cameras, I wanted to answer a question that a lot of you guys have asked me on my channel, and that is, are these cameras reliable? Are Sony cameras reliable? Are they tough enough? Can they stand full-time pro work? Are they something that you can use as a full-time professional without worrying about reliability? Now obviously I can only speak from my own experience. I have owned an A9, I've owned an A7 II, I've owned two A7R3s, I've had an A6300, an A6500, and I've had a whole bunch of lenses obviously, and this is just coming from my experience. I've shot a lot with these cameras. I'd hate to think what the shutter count on these cameras are, but they'd be pretty high. So are these cameras reliable? Now straight out the bat, no teasers. They are super reliable I've never had any major issues with these cameras I'm really happy with them but there has been a few things that haven't been perfect so let's go over those now so the first one is just a cosmetic issue the paint seems to rub off on these cameras really easily if you have a look at this you can see on any sort of hard edge where the camera may be rubbing on my body or on my fingers or anything like that you can see the paint has kind of rubbed off a little bit so it's only a cosmetic issue and I don't know if it happens with other cameras I never really found it happen with my Nikon cameras but the paint on the camera seems to be too thin or maybe not good enough quality and it definitely rubs off so I don't really care but it is worth noting. Now the other thing I've had which happened just recently on my Queenstown trip if you go and have a look at that that's it was a pretty cool trip go and check it out it was fun but my headphone jack broke halfway through the trip and I didn't realize until I got home and started editing videos so it only works on one channel now and it's crackly and all that sort of stuff it's an easy repair I just need to send it away and I just haven't had time yet so that's actually still broken and I believe it's a fairly common issue if it's something that you use all the time other than that I've had not one issue with any of my Sony cameras in the three years that I've been shooting with Sony now um, I obviously have heard of some people having issues with overheating and things like that. I believe it's mostly due to the previous models like the a7R2. When I originally switched to Sony I was shooting with two a7R2s and I did have the heat warning come up but the, it never got hot enough that the camera shut down. Saying that I'm in New Zealand and we kind of max out temperature wise at like 28, 30 degrees on a really hot summer day so I'm never in a really crazy hot situation like some people would be in America with the deserts or something like that but I've never had a camera shut down with me. With my A9 I did have a couple of times maybe twice or three times uh, after a certain firmware update where the camera just started locking up randomly. Um, I'm not sure what that was it just continued to write to the SD cards constantly like it was just looping endlessly. I fixed that just by doing a standard factory reset in the menu system and resetting up the camera from scratch and it seemed to be fine so I think the firmware update possibly just stuffed something up there and uh, you know like I said doing the factory firmware update fixed that but with my A7R3s I've never had any lockups or anything like that so really happy there. In terms of weather sealing I've had these cameras wet, like proper wet um, you know standing and soaking rain through a ceremony where I had to kind of just be outside and you know the cameras were just soaked and I never had an issue. The only tip I can give you with the Sony cameras in terms of weather sealing is on the hot shoe if these hot shoes get wet they really don't like it so keep that plastic cover in there that comes with it. It pays to keep a few with you probably because you lose them all the time but you know if these little contacts get wet inside the hot shoe mount the cameras really don't like it. It'll throw a warning like this accessory is not compatible with the camera or something like that and all you need to do is just dry it off and it should be fine. So I've had that maybe twice and like I said I just dry it off with my t-shirt and it's been totally fine. Other than that I've had no issues with moisture getting into the camera or anything like that. In terms of everyday professional performance these cameras have been so solid and I've been so happy with them. When I was shooting with Nikon I think I had two D750s and a D810. I never really had any issues with my D810 although I did drop it once and crack something on the top which I needed to get replaced but both of my D750s needed two shutter replacements each. I know it was a recall issue and um, you know that was dealt with by Nikon in a timely fashion so no issues there. I have dropped my Sony's a few times um, not on anything drastic but you know I've dropped them on tiles once just from sort of hip height uh, it came off my strap and it fell onto the uh, kitchen tiles and nothing happened it just put a little bit of a dent in it and it was fine so just carried on like normal no issues whatsoever so yeah in terms of reliability I have no issues at all saying that these Sony cameras are 
super reliable and totally fit for professional use. Like I said, that's just my opinion. And, you know, I can't speak for everybody. And any product is going to have someone that has bad luck with lenses or a body or something like that and is going to have a fault. No product is perfect. It's the same with anything. I know Fuji have lots of lockup issues. Nikon have had issues in the past with the shutters, like I said. Canon have had a whole bunch of issues. Every company has had issues. But my time, my three years, and my 150-ish weddings with the Sony system has been flawless and I could not be happier, especially with the A7R3s and the A9. I must admit when I was shooting with these A7R2s, the battery life kind of got to me a little bit. It was kind of annoying having to swap batteries so often. And it really annoyed me with the R2s how the menu system was so slow. Um, you know, just even zooming into 100% if you wanted to check focus, just the functionality and use of the camera was really slow. Even though the focus was really amazing and everything else was enough for me to switch from Nikon D810s obviously. But, you know, the, the overall performance of the camera was quite slow in terms of user interface. So really happy with these cameras. Can't recommend them enough. Any questions, pop them down in the comments below. I'm going to be doing a Q&A questionnaire soon. So pop over to the community section and there'll be a post there where you can list all your questions that you want to know from me. Anything about business or how I got here, what gear I like, anything you want to know, post a question below. And I'm going to go through all the ones I can if possible. We're at six and a half thousand subscribers now, and I'm really stoked that all you guys have been following along. It's just been such a great journey. Tomorrow, I'm gonna go pick up my van, hashtag van life. So I bought myself a 2010 Toyota High Ace Jumbo. So it's the wide body, ultra long, I think it's the biggest high ace you can buy and I can't wait to go pick it up. I'm going to start building it straight away. So I'm going to pick it up about 3 o'clock and then I'm going to go straight to the hardware store and pick up some plywood. Start stripping out the back, I'm going to insulate it and then start building it up and I'm going to document all that in a separate series. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. It's going to be my ultimate sort of adventure, uh, photography, touring, van life, hashtag, bus, life, fun, van. See you guys soon.